Now I'd like to call a request, uh, Dr. G.C. Katochi, to please come and speak on the topic of regulation and quality control of Ayurvedic, Siddha, Yunani, and homeopathic drugs. So Dr. G.C. Katochi is the advisor uh, in Ayurveda in the Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, New Delhi. Invoking the presence of uh, His Holiness, Shri Dalai Lama Ji, Good morning to all of you. Namaskar. The previous three uh, speakers, they spoke about uh, three different systems. I'm going to speak on a regulatory system for the traditional medicine in our country. Uh, you know that uh, India is a land of diversities, diverse languages, diverse food habits of the people, diverse ethnic groups, diverse uh, food habits, dress code, everything. So similarly, we have different medical systems which are officially recognized in the country. Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha, Swarapa, Homeopathy, other than the conventional system of medicines. So India is a land of medical pluralism. Medical pluralism. So many systems are officially recognized and people have the choice to avail the system of their choice as per their needs. And the two systems out of these IU systems, the yoga and naturopathy, they are drugless. They do not make use of any drugs. The other systems, they are drug-based systems. And if you see the infrastructure, the IU traditional medicine infrastructure, it is huge. We have more than 7,71,000 registered practitioners of IU systems. We have more than 550 teaching institutions, out of which 170 institutions, they impart postgraduate training. We have, uh, uh, on an average, uh, more than 33,000 of traditional medicines they pass out from the teaching institutions. Uh, and for the postgraduates, 4,876 postgraduates, they come out of these institutions and they go to the field. And in the government sector, means government has given a lot of uh, policy support for these systems. Initially, the support was inclusive policy support, but now it is exclusive. You know that uh, since uh, 2014, we have an independent ministry of Ayush to look after the traditional systems of medicine and homeopathy. And in the government sector, we have 3,639 uh, hospitals, the government hospitals. And uh, similarly, the dispensaries, 26,000 dispensaries, more than 26,000. So this number is huge. I am not giving the number of the Soharupa institution, but they are also there. But now, after the recognition of Soharupa system of medicine as the part of Indian system of medicine since 2010, now the practice and the practitioner and the education of Soharupa is going to be regulated. And similarly, we are going to regulate the drugs of the Soharupa. So manufacturers of Soharupa drugs as well as the drugs of Soharupa, they are going to be regulated because now they have come under the regulatory umbrella. And if you see, as on date, we have more than 8,500 uh, uh, drug manufacturing units which are, which are licensed, uh, registered, right? And apart from this, apart from this, is this, this is a standalone traditional medicine infrastructure. But now the co-location has started, physical integration has started with this uh, National Rural Health Mission, under National Health Mission. In the last uh, five, six years, many of the Ayush facilities have been created in the primary health centers, in the community health centers, in the district hospitals, and in the other uh, sub-district hospitals or other hospitals. So the number, is, you just see the number one, uh, out of 697 district hospitals in the country, 506 district hospitals, they have Ayush facilities. Similarly, in the primary health center, the community centers, and the other health centers. And as on date, in these centers, in the allopathic centers, in the modern medical centers, these facilities are there, and these facilities are manned by more than uh, 15,000 Ayush doctors, for which the central government is providing support. And once uh, we have uh, fully recognized uh, Soharipa practitioners in the field, definitely they will also be going to be placed in the PSCCS in the district hospitals, wherever these systems are popular. Uh, so, uh, since we are going to talk about uh, regulations, what is regulation? Means what, what, uh, what is to be regulated? What is to be done? What is allowed to be done? So that is regulation. And what is not allowed to be, uh, uh, to be come to the market, that is again regulation. So how it is done, all these things are there in the regulations. And, and the need, need for the regulation is that the public should be protected from hazardous effects of the drugs. The safe drugs, the quality drugs should come to the market. That is the purpose of the regulations. 
and uh, the different uh, legal provisions which are there in the um, Act, Drugs and Cosmetic Act. In our country, Drugs and Cosmetic Act is common for all drugs. We have four kinds of drugs which are regulated. The first is the conventional medicine, the allopathic drugs. The second is Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drugs. And the third is, fourth, uh, third is homopathic drugs. And the fourth, it is a new category. That is the chemicals derived from the medicinal plants, phytopharmaceuticals. So the phytoconstituent based drugs, that is a new category of drugs, but it is equivalent to the chemical drugs, to the synthetic drugs, not equivalent to the Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, or Soharipa drugs. So these are the uh, different. And if you see the provisions, legal provisions in the Drugs and uh, Cosmetic Act and the rules, uh, we have two, two, uh, two uh, uh, law books, one uh, Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940, it is a quite old act, and we are going to uh, amend this act and we are going to rather replace this act. Uh, there, is a, there is a recommendation from the government that uh, why not to have a new act, since a lot of amendments have already been made in this act. And under this act there are rules. So if you see uh, Section 3A and Section 3A, uh, section 3H, there is a clear legal definition of what is Ayurveda drug, what is Siddha drug, what is Yunani drug. So similarly, once the Swaripa is included uh, as a part of the Indian systems of medicine, the Swaripa will also be included in the definition of Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani and Swaripa drug. Right? And uh, I will explain you uh, legally uh, what is Ayurvedic drug and what is Yunani drug. Then uh, in the second schedule of the act, we have uh, the definition of homeopathic medicines. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the chapter 4A of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, we have all the provisions, the regulatory provisions for Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drugs, and all those provisions, they are meant for those drugs, those ingredients which are mentioned in the authoritative books. So we have also started uh, compiling the authoritative books of Soaripa that we have done I, a few years back, uh, two years back, I collected that information from Dr. Padma Gurmit. And once those books are included in the chapter uh, four, under the chapter 4A of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, then the work of preparing the formulary, the work of preparing the pharmacopoeia of Sauripa that will start. Uh, and the Drugs and Cosmetic Rule, Rule 151 to 160, uh, nine, it is specifically for Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drugs, means uh, how the license is required, what are the requirements for taking the license, how the application should be made, what are the labeling provisions, what is mismeridine drug, what is spurious drug, what is, all these things are defined in these uh, rules. And uh, there is another uh, uh, important act to regulate the advertisements of the drugs. So drug information, the wrong drug information should not go to the public because otherwise the people, public will be misled and they will start using those products uh, on their own. Uh, drugs are not the substances which the people should consume on their own. They have to be taken with medical advice from the practitioner, qualified practitioner, registered practitioner. So if you see the overall provisions of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act for uh, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, and uh, uh, Ayurveda Siddha and Yunani drugs, uh, these are under chapter 4A, and all those things are there. Uh, the government does not make uh, the regulations on their own. There, is, there are two bodies, Ayurveda Siddha Yunani Drug Technically Advisory Board is there. Similarly, Ayurveda Siddha Yunani Drugs Consultative Committee is there. They advise the government that, okay, what kind of regulations are required. We are not going in the same way as, as the regulations for the allopathic side or for the modern medical drugs because we, we want to protect our principles of the tradition system and, and the philosophy of the systems as well as the metho manufacturing methodology of our system, drugs like that. Uh, and uh, apart from Drugs and Cosmetic Act, there are other acts which also uh, have their implication in the manufacturing of Ayurveda, Siddha, United Drugs, like the Food Standard and Safety Act, Biodiversity Act, Wildlife Protection Act, Indian Forest Act, because there are certain substances which are derived from the forest. So, uh, so Forest Act also applies to Ayurveda, Siddha, United Drug uh, uh, related uh, ingredients. The narcotic drugs, there are many poisonous substances uh, like opium or like uh, this cannabis. They are the narcotic substances, so they are regulated through Narcotic Drugs and Cytotropic Substances Act, and that act is also applicable to the such kind of substances which are used in Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, or uh, Sauripa medicines. And uh, uh, if you see the national committees, we have three uh, different committees. One committee that gives advice to the central government, to the state government, for, for making regulations. 
be what kind of regulations are required. That is known as Ayurveda Siddha Yunani Duck Technical Advisory Board. Means that technical issues or the policy issues of the drugs. And the second is enforcement issues. Sometimes there is misinterpretation or the improper interpretation of the legal provisions. So in that matter, the advice is given by the Ayurveda Siddha Yunani Drug Consultative Committee. The licensing authorities of all the states, they are the member of that committee and the Drug Controller General of India is the chairman of that committee. That is the Ayurveda Siddha Yunani Drug Consultative Committee. So once we have the drugs included, uh, of, of Sawaripa included in that, we will have, uh, will we have representative from the Sawaripa fraternity also. And for homopathy, we don't have a full-fledged body, but there is a subcommittee on the Drug Technical Advisory Board. They give advice related to homopathic drugs. And for technical matters, for laying down the standards, for developing the standards, for developing the standard operating procedures for the manufacturing of the drugs, we have Pharmacopoeia Committees and the Pharmacopoeia Commission. So Pharmacopoeia Commission is an umbrella body under whose jurisdiction the Pharmacopoeia Committees, they work and they develop the Pharmacopoeia, and then the Pharmacopoeia is published by the government. Uh, institutional arrangement for development of the quality standards. So this is very important. I think the same kind of arrangement is required for the Sovaripa drugs also. We need uh, um, means uh, Pharmacopoeia Commission of Indian Medicine to coordinate. Pharmacopoeia Commission of Indian Medicine and Homopathy is the main body to coordinate uh, with the development of uh, all uh, the standards, uh, whether these are the drug standards or whether they are standard operating procedures. Pharmacopoeia committees, they work in, uh, in a standard template. A standard template is already there, and in that template, the standards are developed, and then they are incorporated in the pharmacopoeia. Then the scientific institution, R&D institution, laboratories undertake basic work of standardizations. And then uh, uh, the data generated by these institutions, they come to the pharmacopoeia committee, and then the pharmacopoeia committee, they harmonize that data and after that with consensus they lay down the standards of the products and the drugs. And the, what is the nature of uh, ASU drugs? Uh, the, basically the ASU drugs, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, they are made up of wholesome ingredients, not of phytoconstituents, not of phytochemicals, only wholesome ingredients and we have allowed the use of wholesome extract, whether it is water extract, or hydroalcoholic extract or any other extract, not beyond extract. If it is beyond extract means fraction or the phytoconstituent, then it is not traditional medicine. Then it is just like, like a chemical drug and we have given the name of phytopharmaceutical to that category of drug, right? And if you see uh, the, the, the traditional medicinal products, they are basically of two types. One, the classical, classical or the traditional or the generic which are given in our authoritative books the same formula that, that has to be prepared in the, with the same proportion of ingredients with the same methodology, right? So that is a classical or traditional. And there is another, your own formula, experience-based formula or R&D-based formula. So that is known as proprietary formula. Means when, where you have applied your IPR, intellectual property right. So in the proprietary category, again, there are four subtypes. One is textual rational based means some ingredients are mentioned in the uh, literature and then on the basis of their properties uh, or their therapeutic indications, you have combined them together and you have made your own formula. So that is a, a medicine formula. Some formula, basically they are medicine formula, but they are used for the purpose of beautification. So, but actually they are not cosmetics. So, so cosmetics, looking like cosmetics, so that category is also there, cosmeceutical medicinal formulation. Similarly, many of traditional formulation like Chavan Prash, you know everybody Chavan uh, it is a nutritive formulation, right? Brahm Rasayan, Brahm Rasayan. So they are, they are nutritive medicine formulation. So for them, the regulatory requirements, uh, the documents or the information which is required from the manufacturer that is different from the medicinal formulations. And then extract-based formulation. So these are the four subcategories of proprietary kind of medicines and the phytopharmaceuticals, they are not Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drugs, neither classical nor proprietary medicines. They are just treated like synthetic drugs and for that the regulatory mechanism, the regulatory framework, the regulatory requirements are different. And this is the phytopharmaceutical. I think it should be very clear to you that uh, uh, what is traditional, 
and what is not traditional. So phytopharmaceutical drug legal, this is the legal definition. Phytopharmaceutical drug means and includes purified and standardized fraction with defined minimum four bioactive or phytochemical constituents, compounds of an extract of a medicinal plant or its part for internal or external use of human beings or for animals, for diagnosis, for treatment, for mitigation or prevention of any disease or disorder, but does not include administration by parental route. Injections are not allowed in Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, and similarly in the phytopharmaceuticals. Injection, only through the oral route, external application, or through the anal route. Only these are the three routes through which we can administer our medicines. The parental route, the injection route, uh, that is not allowed legally. And if you see the legal definition of Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drug, I think this definition will also apply for the Sovaripa drugs which are, which are uh, going to be included in the drugs and cosmetic act and in the rules. The classical or the Shastriya or the traditional is that formula which is mentioned in the authority books. Means you cannot change that formula. And the authority books, they are 1,000 years old, they are 2,000 years old, or maybe 3,000 years, like Chark Sainta, the oldest compendium of Ayurveda. Right? So you cannot change the formula. You cannot change the proportion of the ingredients. You cannot change the ingredients. And even you cannot change the name. Like Chaman Prash is Chaman Prash. You cannot give it other name. You cannot uh, change the composition of Chaman Prash. So these formula, they are known as classical. And the regulatory requirements for these kinds of drugs are different. Just, right? And then there are patent and proprietary formulations. Again, the proprietary medicines have to be made from those ingredients which are mentioned in the authority mix. Means, if there is any medicinal plant coming from other country, or even if it is grown in India, but it, if it is not documented in the authority books, that product cannot be called as Ayurveda product. This is very clear. I mean, there are medicine plants like ginseng. Now, ginseng is not mentioned in any of our uh, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani books, authority books. It means you cannot make Ayurveda product from ginseng. Similarly, other plants which are grown in India, but not documented, so they are also. Many medicine plants which are used by the tribal people or by the ethnic groups, but uh, if they are not documented in the authority books, they will not be used for preparing, preparing for manufacturing Ayurveda Siddha Yunani drugs. Uh, these are the different requirements, as I told you, that what are the requirements for uh, taking license for manufacturing. Without license, you cannot make the uh, products. And if you see the size of the industry, as on date, we have 8,667 drug manufacturers, licensed drug, those who have been given license, right? And out of these 43, they are from the government sector. It means the many state governments, even the central government, they have set up uh, manufacturing units. And the private manufacturing units are 8,624. And the maximum number is from Ayurveda, 7,439, 585 of Yunani, 235 of Siddha, and 408 of Mopethi. And we are also looking for coverage of Soripa drugs under uh, this umbrella. And I think in the next few years, uh, we will have that. And these are the basic requirements. If you want to manufacture a product commercially, on commercial basis, the first is license is required. And where you will manufacture the drug, that, uh, that premises, that unit, that factory, that must be GMP compliant, good manufacturing compliant. And the, what are the good manufacturing practices that is given under Rule 157 in Schedule T? Then in the manufacturing unit, there must be adequate infrastructure facility, the staff, equipment, reference books, record keeping, everything. And apart from that, the manufacturer has to comply to the standards given in the pharmacopoeia. It is mandatory for the pharm uh, manufacturers to comply to the standards which are given in the pharmacopoeia. Right? So these are the different uh, kinds of requirements for different kind of formulations. I am not going into detail of that. And when you go for license, how the application is made. So you, you have to give the reference from where you have taken this formulation or from where you have taken the ingredients from which you are going to make the formulation. Right? So you will have to give the authentic reference and that reference has to be from the authority books. Only then you can say that it is either drug or Siddhar drug or Yunani drug or Swaripa drug, otherwise not. Then manufacturing units should be compliant with the GMP requirements as given the Schedule D and the proof of safety and effectiveness. This is very, very important. Different kinds of proofs of safety and effectiveness they are required. We are not calling proof of efficacy. 
because efficacy means pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics. No, we are not asking that. Proof of effect. Whatever you are claiming, that okay, just show us the proof. Whether it is on the basis of the principles of the system, or whether it is from the published literature, or it could be by conducting small pilot studies or small clinical trials. Uh, and if you see, uh, these are the pharmacopoeia standards which have been developed for different systems. And these are the books of pharmacopoeia. Uh, we have a double pharmacopoeia for single drugs, means ingredients as well as for the compound formulation. And this work is very, very tedious. Suppose if a formulation has 20 ingredients, 40 ingredients, like Chaman Prash has 40 ingredients. So it is very difficult to develop the standards of a formulation which is having 48 ingredients. It takes time. Many institutions are involved, many interdisciplinary experts are involved, but this has been done and we are working on this and as far, uh, as, far as Ayurveda compound formulations are concerned, multi ingredient formulations are concerned, more than 252 formulations they have been standardized and they are uh, published in the pharmacopoeia. And these are the books of standardized formulations. So yesterday I was, uh, I was just suggesting that let us start with some formulations, the classical formulations which are there in the sober literature. We can compile them, we can make the list and we can publish in the form of the, uh, the, uh, these uh, formulary of sober so Just two minutes more. Now, for, for, for standardized supply of medicines to the government hospitals, to the government dispensaries, we have published essential drug list for each system. Ayurveda, uh, essential drug list, Unani essential drug list, Siddha's essential drug list, homeopathy uh, list. Similarly, how to conduct the clinical trial on traditional medicine, we have published the guidelines, good clinical practice guidelines for the conduct of uh, the clinical trials. And these uh, guidelines are a bit different from the guidelines which are there for the allopathic drug. The, they are the phase one, phase two, phase three, so many things are required. But no, our are very comprehensive, very holistic, and they take care of the philosophy and the principles of the traditional medicines. Similarly, drug testing laboratories are there. So drug testing laboratories for Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani drugs. So what is the infrastructure requirement there, the manpower requirement there, the references uh, required there. So all this thing that is also there uh, published in the book. And similarly, we have published uh, system specific documents, profile documents, system profile, Ayurveda, homeopathy, this uh, Unani system of medicine, Siddha. I think in near future, we will also like to have a similar document for Suaripa. So the quality certification system, GMP certification is mandatory as per the law, and there are other systems also, quality certification system, through which our products, they are going out of India, because many importing countries, they want WHO GMP certification, certificate of pharmaceutical products. So that mechanism has also put in place, Drug Controller General of India is administering that uh, system, and 12, 13 companies, Indian companies, they have taken this certification, and they are exporting to uh, different countries. Similarly, Quality Council of India, they have, uh, implemented one scheme, the Ayush Mark and the Ayush Premium Mark scheme. Uh, Ayush Premium Mark scheme is if the product is off as per the international standards. So that certificate is uh, given after third party evaluation of uh, the manufacturing unit and of the product. And in nutshell, if you see the present uh, regulatory framework for Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani, and Hope with the drugs in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the country, in the center we have drug control cell in the ministry. I am the head of that uh, cell in the ministry, drug control cell. And now we are going to set up a, a vertical, Ayush regulatory vertical structure in the Central Drug Standard Control Organization under the control of the Drug Controller General of India so that we can have a unified approach for the regulation of Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani, Homeopathy, and in future, the Swaripa drugs. And then um, the central government is responsible to make the regulations and to amend the regulations. And uh, central government has the power to give directions to the state governments that how the act should be implemented. So uh, with regard to the implementation of the act, the direction Time, uh, time and again the directions are given to the state authorities and then for laying down the standards we have at the central level the pharmacopoeia commission of indian medicine and homeopathy and the pharmacopoeia committees and we also have central laboratories Central laboratories, these are the appellate laboratories under the provisions of the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules, Pharmacopoeia Laboratory of Indian Medicine, and the Homeopathy Pharmacopoeia Laboratories. And whenever any sample from the court or from the state government is referred to these uh, laboratories, they test them and they give the report, and that report becomes acceptable to just one minute, just one minute. And at the state level, we have the licensing authority or the drug controllers, drug inspectors, and those who are responsible to give the license and to do the quality control activities. And drug testing laboratories are also there in the state. 
states. And as I told you in the beginning that the center government and the state government is advised by two bodies, Ayurveda Siddha United Drug Technical Advisory Board, Ayurveda Siddha United Drug Consultative Committee, and a subcommittee on homeopathy to make the regulations, to enforce the regulations. So these are the things. And so with this, I end my presentation. And if you have any query or any clarification you feel it, you can write down to us. I have given the email ID and the post address of the department. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank Dr. D.C. Kotoji very much for the, uh, the very illuminating a speech on the topic of regulation on quality control of Ayurvedic, Siddha, Yunani, and homeopathic drugs. That now we have got about 20 minutes time for question answers. The, uh, uh, it's open for all. And in the meantime, uh, tea and refreshment is ready outside. There's no specific tea break. So whenever you feel like you could just slowly, uh, quietly uh, go, go from the back and then have tea and refreshments and again come in quietly. And after that, uh, from 11 to 11.45, again, we'll be having, uh, 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 having another session, plenary session in the same hall. So again, kindly come back. It's not in the other hall like before. Okay. So if there's any question, uh, so before you, you say uh, or you, uh, you have any questions, so kindly address uh, to whom the question is to. Hello. Good morning, everybody, and thanks, Chair. Uh, first of all, I must congratulate all the speakers for delivering such a wonderful, nice talk. And especially Dr. D.C. Katoch, he has given a comprehensive uh, a setup of Ayush in uh, the government of India in terms of regulation. D.C. Katoch is Dinesh Chand Katoch, but he is, my friend in the, he is my friend in the ministry. I have worked with him for about three, five years. Actually, D.C. Katoch means drug and control Katoch. <laughs> And uh, I don't have any question. I have a, a suggestion. And the suggestion is that my friend, a professor from Sovarikpa side, has given, of course, a good talk. But I was unable to understand it. And many like me, many of us in this uh, gathering like me, were not able to understand it. It would be better if it is translated into the Hindi or English language. Thank you very much. I also have a question for uh, Professor Katochji. Um, can you give us a timeline about this new Drugs and Cosmetics Act when the new one will be formulated and, and passed? And also what will be the major changes and reforms uh, compared to the current one? Frankly speaking, I cannot give the exact timelines why? Because uh, there is interdepartmental, interministerial uh, consultation and the consultation with the stakeholders also. So it takes, uh, nobody knows that when the law, new law will be made, but it is in the process. We have already drafted the intended provisions and now the consultation uh, will start. Uh, and uh, the point which you made that, uh, what would be the new things? The new things is, that as on date, uh, we are having only Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, homeopathy, and uh, uh, the, the chemical drugs or the synthetic or the allopathic drugs. So uh, uh, probably in the new act, uh, we will have other drugs also, like the Soaripa drugs. Or if the present act is amended, even then we can include uh, Soaripa drugs. But uh, there is uh, one more possibility, that is, <coughs> we don't recognize a, a drug as herbal drug. If you see the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, you will not find the term herbal. So herbal category, herbal medicine, or herbal products, these are not recognized in our country as per the law. But many products from outside, from other countries, they are coming to the country. So we will also try to regulate them, and then we will put a new category that herbal or some non-Ayush uh, products like that. So uh, still it is not decided what nomenclature we will give to that uh, category of uh, drugs. 
uh, which are not, uh, which, uh, which do not belong to any system. Because why we are using Ayurveda drug? Ayurveda drug does not mean it's a herbal drug. Because herbal, herbalism is not a system as such. There is no system. There are no principles of herbalism. It is only indicates that the product is made more from some herbal material, some from plant material. So that <coughs> we intend to cover. Mr. Schwabel. Uh, Dr. Katuch, I want to add to this question. Uh, one other problem are the raw materials. Is there any intention to regulate the quality of raw materials? Uh, presently, the raw material which our industry uses, uh, about 80% uh, it comes from the wild, it comes from the forest sources, not from the cultivated source. But to take up this issue it means uh, the quality material, the quality raw material should come from the cultivated source. The government of India has set up one national medicine plant board. So national medicine plant board is responsible to coordinate all the activities related to sustainable development of medicine plants and the demand and supply, everything. So uh, through that, uh, some of the issues related to uh, this medicinal plants material that is uh, being taken care of. But uh, the thing is, uh, now uh, we have published a good uh, agriculture practices for medicinal plants, good uh, uh, collection practices or harvesting practices like that. Uh, and as far as the, uh, uh, the quality, availability of the quality material is there, now, a scheme has been introduced by the government of India that is the voluntary quality certification of the raw material. Now, the, now the material, the same material is used by different industry, like if turmeric, now turmeric or aloe vera, aloe vera is used by cosmetics industry, aloe vera and turmeric is used by the food industry. Turmeric and aloe vera is also used by the Ayurveda industry, Siddha industry, or the Yunani industry, or similarly it could be so repaired. Now, the thing is, which particular ministry should make a law for controlling the raw material? That is the issue. That is the issue. Uh, but as per the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, as on today, once the raw material, if it is outside the manufacturing premises, it is not regulated. But once it enters into the manufacturing premises, it gets regulated because you will have to comply to the pharmacopoeia standards, the quality standards given in the pharmacopoeia. So that way, regulation is there. Um, I have one question for Dr. Katoj. Um, now, I come from Leh, Ladakh, and sir, uh, sir uh, I have one request and one question that uh, um, we saw a request scholar and saw a request student, saw our practitioner, are very, um, very big, huge hope from the Ayush after the recognition in 2010. So now problem is that after recognition, whenever saw a request practitioner go to Delhi and they try to found the, um, any office or regulator for the Swaripa. So when we go to the Delhi, there is not any separate you know, office where we can ask about the uh, information about the Swarikpa and this thing. So we need an independent office from the Aish, you know, uh, some people who are appointed from the Swarikpa field. So we can ask freely. Uh, so this is uh, very uh, needed in this time. And another thing is that... For the time being, uh, you can be free with me. You yes. Can ask anything. No problem. Till, till a regular post is created, uh, and someone uh, from Sawaripa uh, sits on that seat. And sir, uh, one, important, one more important thing is that um, yesterday also said, or one of the doctors said, and every year uh, in this day, more traditional should uh, approach to the more scientific, uh, scientific, scientific basis medicine. So, uh, um, uh, I feel that uh, we saw our practitioner, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a very good learned expert like again uh, Raghdur Rinpoche and Gen Randula and Dr. Padma Gimedla and many experts in here. But 
uh, through them, you know, we also want to learn about the uh, clinical, how to do a clinical approach and how can we approach uh, through the scientific medicines to Sawaripa. So through, if, if we do like that, then we can, uh, uh, what's say, pick up level of this Sawaripa to the modern, uh, modern science uh, medicine. So as, as, as also done by the uh, Ayurveda many times, in 1947, uh, uh, they made a Chopra committee, Pandit committee. So similarly to that, we need a one committee, uh, what's a, one umbrella uh, to uh, see all over the Sawaripa field. Thank you. Sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my question is also to Dr. Katuchi. Um, having said that Sawaripa and Ayurvedic medicine have so many different similarities, so we, there are so many substances or raw materials that we use you know, in a common way. So what will be a regulatory guideline in future when we have the Sawaripa pharmacopoeia on those particular drugs? Because uh, once the, the director of Menzikang, the print, Present director of Minzikan uh, said that he got a warning from the from the from uh, government of India. Maybe I, I, I didn't remember the exact department. So he was warned that uh, in Tibetan medicine there are so many drugs which were used, which was also used in Ayurvedic drugs. So these drugs were not allowed to use in Tibetan medicine. So, so what will be the uh, guideline? when we got the you know, full-fledged uh, pharmacopoeia from the Swarik site? Uh, the fact is that there are many medicine plants which are common to different systems. The medicine plants which are used in Ayurveda, they are also used in urinary system medicine. They are also used in the Siddha system of medicines. Similarly, there could be some plants or many plants which could be used in the Swarik products. Now the thing is, if those plants if their quality standards are already laid down in the Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia or Unani pharmacopoeia or Siddha pharmacopoeia, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. Those can be adopted as such, but we need to know the list of medicinal plants which are used in soil permits. So yesterday also I made this request that once we come to know the authoritative formulations, authoritative books and the list of medicinal plants, I think many issues can be addressed. Easily those can be addressed. Like suppose if you are using some plant which is also used in Ayurveda and that and the monograph, the quality standards of those have already been developed. So you can start adopting that. So what is the harm? Why to develop? Because the standards cannot be different. The standards of the medicine plant cannot be different. These will be the same. It is only the use. Sometimes the use may also be the similar. So developing pharmacopoeia for Sovaripa, it will take long, long time. But the, the quality standards of the medicine plants which are used in Swaripa, if these are already published, I think we, you can easily start adopting that, right? Same uh, thing can be used in different systems. But uh, I think what you are referring to is uh, the drugs which are manufactured by uh, Swaripa, you know, um, institutions. And if the same medicine is used uh, or produced in uh, Ay Ayurveda, so that cannot be duplicated by Swaripa. Do you mean that or you are referring to the herbs? Both. So you, are, you answered the herbs part, but the drug part is left. Starting uh, the, the work, uh, the standards, uh, the work of standards for the formulations, for that, first of all, we need to have the list of authoritative books and then the formulations also. Because the same formulation could be mentioned differently in two different texts. So that has to be harmonized. That has to be standardized. So that work will be done by the pharmacopoeia committee, by the pharmacopoeia commission and then the formulary, the formulary of Sovaripa that can be published, this thing. But as far as the medicine plants, 
the use of medicinal plants in the sewer repair is concerned, there could be two, two kinds of, two categories of medicinal plants. One, those which are already used in Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, and other, those which are not mentioned in these systems, but they are exclusively used in sewer repair medicines. So you need to give us two lists, because for the first one, which are already there in Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, I think you can easily adopt the pharmacopoeial standards which are there. But for those which are not mentioned in Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, pharmacopoeia, for that, the standards have to be developed. Now we can have one last question, one last question. My question is to uh, Dr. Sanjeev Ji Gupta. Actually, he is from uh, Shalatantra. So, Shalatantra is also prevalent in Swaripa system of medicine. But the challenge is uh, the procedures are explained in the Shastras or the literatures. Uh, but uh, somehow we lose the tradition of implementation and uh, pro procedure is are not in practice. So moreover, uh, with Ayurveda, it is also almost same. So I would like to know from you, what is the status of Shalya or surg surgical system in Ayurvedic system? And uh, uh, what is your plan to revive the surgical procedure in Ayurvedic system of medicine? That is to uh, Dr. Sanjeev Ji Gupta. And the another question is to Dr. Yip. Uh, for you, uh, I would like to know that actually there is uh, sometimes confusing for people who just uh, superficially uh, try to learn about Chinese system of medicine, TCMs. Uh, I would look, like to know that whether it is a one solid system of medicine, even 2015 I visited uh, China, that time I came to know that it is consortium of medicines. All together, there is uh, uh, 30, 40 kind of medical systems prevalent within the uh, TCM. Regarding the surgical procedure described in Ayurvedic literature and in Swarapa uh, system of the medicine, Whatever the things described in Ayurvedic literature, it is very old. I think near about 2,000 years before. But nowadays, most of the thing is absolute. But the whatever the things is the fundamental principle is still the same in many cases. Like I keep the one example for the management of the fracture whatever the susut described, the principles of the management of the fracture, even the reconstructive surgery described under the heading of the sandhankam, whatever the principles susut described, it is still same. Only the change is the advancement of the technology we facilitate to operate these things. There is need of the incorporation of these things or in other way, we can say we also update our literature in present scenario. Otherwise, whatever the things is practices 2000 year back, it is not be authenticated to practice in present era. This is the my view. But here, the government is also uh, take some uh, steps forward to regularize these things also, the methodology and the uh, technique. Many things say, uh, uh, like I, I another uh, give the example, uh, regarding the some sort of the instrument, the use of laparoscopy. This is the era of the laparoscopy, but the similar type of the instrument Susut also described under the heading of the Nadi Yantra. And their function also described. Uh, it is for the diagnostic purpose, it is for the uh, 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 treatment purpose, and so many other things. This is the principle of the uh, instrument. The change is we, uh, due to the develop, uh, advancement of the technology, we modify the, these instrument in present scenario. So this thing also we adopted or incorporated in our literature. This is the need. It's my view. Uh, uh, Dr. Gurmit, I think uh, just what he has said, just to add to that, uh, if you see the educational regulations, the Shalya and the Shalakya, these are the two surgical disciplines of Ayurveda. You know, both have specialized courses 
एम एस कोर्सेज फॉर शालक्य एंड एम एस कोर्सेज फॉर शल्या ऑफ आयुर्वेदा दे आर देयर एंड मैनी इंस्टीट्यूशन इन द कंट्रीज दे आर इम्पार्टिंग मास्टर्स कोर्स इन शल्या एंड मास्टर कोर्स इन शालाक्य सो दिस इज द थिंग ओके फॉर टेस्टिंग सेस ओके फॉर द टी सी एम सो इफ्स लेट्स ए समर वो आर कीन टू लर्न नॉर्मली वी यूज द टेक्सट बुक दैट इज डिजाइंड इन चाइना एंड इन सिंगापोर द कोर्सेज दैट इज कंडक्टेड आर ऑल इन चाइनीज अनलेस यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड सम अदर वेस्टर्न कंट्री दैन दे ऑफर टी सी एम इन इंग्लिश सो जस्ट नो यू सो मैंशन दैट दे आर अदर सिस्टम इन टी सी एम वट आर सम सिस्टम दैट यू आर डिफरेंट सिस्टम वट आर सम डिफरेंट सिस्टम यू आर रिफरिंग टू Uyghur system. So, but uh, even when I visited China, they said like they are bunch of medical systems. Not only one. Uh, one you referred is a Taoism, you know, from Taoism. It is derived from Taoism. And other certainly, if Uyghur is prevalent there, it is uh, uh, Yunani system of medicine. So likewise, there is incorporation of many small ethnic medical system within uh, TCM. That's what I'm referring to. Okay, so so it's like there are a lot of uh, different modality that is grouped under the TCM. So over the years, it has been like a collections. So right now, it's more or less firm up with all this modality, and uh, the sleepers in China, they have actually drawn up a lot of different subjects that are required to to learn. So uh, when you talk about other system, it could be like uh, in the case of acupuncture. Uh, although we learn the normal one, but there are also other school of acupuncture whereby they do focusing on the palm, on the leg, or the belly, or the head. So there are different branches that come up. So maybe on that aspect, uh, a lot of them will get confused whether this is, you know, uh, different school not in the text or other other modality that is outside this here. Uh, so when we are learning in school, so we learn the general one, but of course there are also other school of uh, treatment. We also learn other other form. So it becomes like it's a embrace of whatever the new development in China. Then we will try to learn from them. Yeah, because TSCM uh, ultimately is originated from China, and they have a lot of uh, patients and uh, the experts are very professional in their area. So he's always constantly learning from them. Yes. So now, uh, now, no, sir. I, I, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to request you to kindly ask the question in the in the in the lunch break. <laughs> okay. So the very last one, uh, very short. Just. Uh, this is just for my curiosity. Uh, my question is directed to Dr. Katoch and Dr. Professor Gupta. The question is, under uh, Drug and Cosmetic Act, parental use of the medicine is not regulated. But in surgery, we are giving the anesthesia to the patient. Parental injections are there. So many th drugs are being given. So how this use of anesthesia in Ayurvedic department is regulated? One is regulation of the practitioner, another is regulation of the drug. As far as the drug part is concerned, that is regulated under the provision of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act. As far as the practitioner is concerned, the rights and privileges of the practitioners are decided by the state government. And as per the Act, there are provisions that they can be allowed to use modern medical system, allopathic. So drug is not of Ayurveda Siddha Yunani. Anesthetic agent or the other painkiller or other thing, they are of the other system. They are already regulated. But the use of that drug, the use of that device can be allowed to the practitioner provided the state government they take a decision. It is there. No, no, manufacturing of the drug for parental use. That is another thing. No, 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 no. It is not the parental use by the practitioner. It is not there. No, no, no. 
No, so no. now, uh, now I'd like to conclude this session here. And thank you very much for all the distinguished speakers for, for giving the illuminating speeches in your respective topics. So I hope this was very helpful for, for all of us. And now I'd like to request Professor Losantinze Ragdola to kindly uh, offer a memento uh, to the respective guest uh, speakers who would be leaving. So the ones who would be staying back, again, the memento would be offered later on.